Hey, welcome to another special edition of BNS About Movies. This is Sam. You can find the website at BNS About Movies, and you can reach out to me at BNS About Movies at gmail.com. This week, to celebrate all three Thunder movies magically showing up on Tubi, I'm going to talk about those three movies as well as their star, Mark Gregory. Born Marco de Gregio, he's one of the more interesting personalities in mid 80s Italian exploitation. The first film of his you need to watch out for is 1990 The Bronx Warriors. Supposedly, he defeated 2,000 other hopefuls for the role of trash after his girlfriend sent in a headshot. Gregory has a strange screen presence. He walks strangely, he pouts throughout every scene, and he doesn't seem like someone tough enough to lead a gang. Uh, they even say his head is all screwed up from that Manhattan women he's been getting. I didn't use the word they're using. Uh, Fred Williamson has said in interviews that he had to teach Gregory how to walk and look tough. He did what he could. A follow-ups like Escape the Bronx and the utterly insane Adam and Eve versus the Cannibals only serve to illustrate that Gregory has a strange charisma all his own. I've read accounts where Gregory's feminine mannerisms resulted in homophobic harassment from some of the extras. That might be one of the reasons he disappeared, but he had super fans like Lance Manley, who runs the Bronx Warriors site, who was so concerned as to where Gregory went that he actually searched throughout Italy, even meeting with director Enzo G. Castellari to find him. The, uh, on the uh, Bronx Blu-rays, there's The Hunt for Trash, interview with Bronx superfan Lance Manley, a short film where he talks about his love for the films and search for the actors. Gregory wasn't in that many movies. In fact, after the two Bronx films and the Italian exploitation version of Genesis, I thought I'd seen them all, but I was wrong. You can also find Mark Gregory in the films Delta Force Commando, Just a Damn Soldier, Tanzan, The Ultimate Mission, War Bus Commando, and the Three Thunder films. Unfortunately, Mark Gregory died in 2013. Uh, I don't want to really go into the sad details. I'll just say that I hope the actor who has brought me and so many people so much joy, has found the peace and death that he could not get in life. But let's not go down a negative path in this. We're here to talk about three exciting movies, and they're from a very strange time in exploitation, especially for Italian movies. As the Reagan 80s were moving forward in 1983, it's a curious time, as I said, because Rambo, the first one, just called First Blood, had came out a year before in 1982 and while a really dark movie and not about what Rambo first blood two and Rambo three would be about, they really seemed to get into the zeitgeist of America wanted to erase its lone loss in combat, the Vietnam war. So a lot of Vietnam movies were either taking their cue from the deer hunter, which is a soldier back home and dealing with, or coming home is another one, dealing with the pain of being home, or getting a chance to right wrongs. Thunder is very much in the template of First Blood, where it's a soldier who has come to town, is confronted with the uh, negative small town, almost like, a, even though uh, Rambo is set in the Pacific Northwest, it really feels like a, a Billy Jackie, uh, Southern redneck kind of movie with the the lone hero coming to town and being confronted with the corrupt sheriffs and, and cops. Uh, Thunder adds even more because Thunder is Native American. And uh, so there's a little bit of that. Interesting that these Native American movies were directed by Fabriezzo DeAngelis, who up until now had mostly been a producer, producing Zombie, House by the Cemetery, The Beyond, 1990, The Bronx Warriors, which we just talked about, The New York Ripper, and many, many more. So let's get into the first of the three movies, Thunder. Stay out of town, idiot. I'm warning you. If not, bang, 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 idiot. See what he did to my brother? He's dead from the waist down. Not to mention what he did to me and the others. Well, get him, Barry.
Indian says he hasn't dug up the war hatchet yet. But if we don't get off the hill, we're all going to end up like Custer. Inside the bank. All units listen up. This is number one. There's a crazy man on his way into town. I don't care what y'all have to do. I want the man stopped. Did you hear that? I want him stopped. Native American warrior Thunder has returned home, only to discover that the white man is destroying his ancestral burial ground. He tries to stop him, but the law only protects whites. He's beaten, banished, and left for dead, but now he's going to get his revenge. Yes, it's a takeoff of First Blood Italian style, but it also stars Mark Gregory. He looks sad for the entire movie. His long locks are intact, his lip quivers, and yes, he might walk like he has a stick up his ass. But... Director Fabriazzo DeAngelis has really created something great here. Uh, this movie was shot in Monument Valley, Utah. So it has an authentic look, if not weaponry. Yes, Thunder uses a bazooka, kind of like you or I would use a rifle, but, you know, we still love Thunder. Thunder is supported by Sheila, who's played by Valeria Cavalli. She's from Fulci's Warriors of the Year 2072, and Lombardo Bava's A Blade in the Dark. Bo Svensson's the evil sheriff. You may recognize him for being a good sheriff, taking over the role of Buford Puster in Walking Tall Part 2, as well as being in Inglorious Bastards, and the remake, the Delta Force, Speed 2 Cruise Control, and Kill Bill Volume 2. Also, Antonio Sabato Sr. is in this. It was written by Dardano Sacchetti, as he wrote nearly every important Italian genre film in the 80s, all the way back to A Bay of Blood, up until movies like Shock, Manhattan Baby, Blast Fighter, and other Italians in America movie directed by Lombardo Bava that this podcast will get to soon. Devilfish, aka Monster Shark, and many more. Maybe some of those movies are more essential than others. But if you want to watch Mark Gregory repeatedly get punched in the face and then get his slow motion revenge, awkwardly slapping at people and shooting massive weapons, really, this is the movie for you. Probably one of the reasons why uh, Mark Gregory was hired for this is that Enzo G. Castellari was the uncredited director for a lot of the action scenes. As this was the first time that Fabrizio D. Angelis uh, was a director. Uh, Gregory supposedly was proficient in the art of Greco-Roman wrestling. <laughs> so that's why the slow motion parts of his fights are in this. They have no stunt doubles. He's actually fighting. Supposedly the Thunder movies were really big on military bases. It was also really big on areas near Native American reservations, as you can imagine, because its hero is coming back and kicking white man ass. Anyway, no delay. Let's get to Thunder 2. Thunder's back. <laughs> side of the law. Back with a vengeance. Thunder 2, the vendetta. When the law is corrupt, innocent people are the victims. Thunder 2, The Injustice. Hold it. Get him. They burnt him. Go ahead. They beat him. 
they tried to break him. Now he's back. Looking for revenge. Take a walk, Billy. This isn't your fight. Look! Shoot, Billy! When the law stops, <laughs> thunder rolls. In the first 40 minutes of Thunder 2, a.k.a. Thunder Warrior 2, the movie recaps the first film, is a rookie cop drama, tells us about corrupt cops, and then becomes an Italian exploitation version of Cool Hand Luke. If you're not in, you'll never be in Get in. This is why I watch movies. Remember the last time we saw Luis Martinez? That's Thunder. He was blowing up an entire town and punching cops in the face. Well, somehow he got past that and now he is a cop. How did this happen? How could it not happen? Even crazier, that same town that he destroyed, he gets assigned to and has to work with the same cops who once ruined his life. That said, Thunder proves to be a pretty good cop. He even wins the trust of his old arch nemesis, Sheriff Roger, a.k.a. Bo Svensson. He even busts a transgender person who nearly knocks him out in a fight. Of course, the rest of the cops are still corrupt. Deputy Rusty Weiser still has it out for Thunder. Sets him up, making it look like he's moving drugs. Thunder has to go to prison and try to survive the box. And even worse, Thunder has the absolute lowest level attorney ever who is drunk the entire film. Instead of waiting for the law to save him, Thunder breaks out, taking a cop car with him. He tries to get a fair trial, but Rusty attacks him and flips over a Jeep, carrying Thunder, his pregnant wife, and the drunken lawyer. Thunder's wife loses the baby, and he goes on the run again. Not the baby, but Thunder, a poorly written sentence. Anyway, when Thunder goes to meet her at the hospital, she tells him, get your revenge. Oh, oh, he does. There's an army of Native Americans, exploding crossbow weaponry, tomahawks, and Mark Gregory stiffly walking around wearing war paint man this movie's great it's everything fabulous about italian exploitation movies that don't have zombies or sex crazed killers uh fabrizio d'angelis returned to direct the sequel and he brought along the most prolific writer in all of italy with him dardano sarchetti at the end of the movie the sheriff just says thunder leave town you're innocent but don't ever come back his drunk lawyer reacts to this by taking a shot of alcohol right in front of a cop they pull away and somewhere far away a sheriff takes out a rifle watches Thunder in the scope, and takes a shot. The end. Are they trying to make a Billy Jack ending? But I mean, this movie is perfect for me. Mark Gregory hanging off a helicopter, sloshly walking around dressed as a cop, Native Americans having their own special doctors. This movie really has everything I want. It's not available on Blu-ray yet. We'll get to that. It's on YouTube. There's gray market ways of finding it. But good news, Thunder was not killed at the end of this movie. There's one more Thunder Warrior. Unfortunately, there is no trailer for Thunder Warrior 3 unless you want to hear it in Spanish. So let me hit you with a little of the soundtrack. Thunder 3, it's time for our favorite Native American warrior, Thunder, to come back and take on a racist militia in Las Cruces, New Mexico. They've refused to pay the very specific amount of $53,000 for attacking and abusing him. Yes, if you're wondering, Thunder gets beaten up in every one of his movies and destroying his village. If the promise of Mark Gregory wearing buckskin and teaching children how to shoot arrows seems like a good idea, this movie's for you. Actually, this movie feels incredibly uh, as if it was made this year. As a bunch of good old boys get all trashed on beer and male bonding, 
before going to beat up some people that they perceive as foreigners. Yes, director Fabrizio DeAngelis is back for a third Thunder film, along with Mark Gregory and, of course, Dardano Sarchetti. But along for the ride is Sheriff Jeff, Diabolic himself, John Philip Law. The bad guys are beyond bad here as they whip our hero, even dragging him behind a truck before blowing up his village. Of course, Thunder has been dragged behind a truck before, but this time he wants paid for it. He wants his, uh, these people to pay that $53,000. But we know why we're watching a Thunder movie, and it's not for people to pay their money in the court. We want the slowly simmering Mark Gregory to explode into violence, bringing a baseball bat, gathering an army of Native American warriors, and jumping dirt bikes. It's more of the same. But you know, watching this film in the post-MAGA era is really strange. Uh, you get frame after frame of big fat white guys shooting up a reservation while their leader watches from a helicopter. It feels too real. So how does Mark Gregory react to these red staters blowing up his home and making him run behind their trucks while tied to the bumper by getting pouty and then going wild? How did three Thunder movies get made? Was there such a demand for them? Were video stores really that awesome in the 80s that they could have an entire Thunder section? Did I dream of a video store with a Dardano Sacchetti section where I could choose to rent favorites like Manhattan Baby and Warriors of the Year 2072? Keep in mind, this is the kind of movie that gives me seizures like I'm in a David Cronenberg movie. I mean, just to set up the scene where Thunder decimates a classic car with a baseball bat, we get a long, loving look at an old redneck in short shorts, washing said car. Then Mark Gregory tears that car apart like only he can. And by that, I mean he stares off into space while absentmindedly hitting it with a bat before heading into a hardware store filled with people and going nuts in the aisles until the shop owner pulls a gun in front of paying customers, no less. You'll never see a store so crappy or one that sells stuff so unnecessary that isn't called the red, white, and blue thrift store in your life. And to top this all off, Thunder fills the aisles with gasoline that he pulled off the shelf because there's just containers of gasoline on the shelf and sets the store on fire. And it's a drugstore, not a hardware store, a store that has, again, full cans of gas next to TV sets. The world that Thunder lives in is not our own. It's a parallel universe of goofball lunacy. One where a lone man who walks as if he has a tomahawk up his butt can wear tight jeans, a fringe shirt, and turquoise while leading the local fuzz on one heck of a manhunt. How many times must they burn down Thunder's home, tie up his woman and beat him? Well, again, how many times does he have to assemble an entire army of Native Americans on horseback? Well, he does it again here. It seems like it should be the last time. If Thunder had this whole posse on his side the whole time, where were they when he was being dragged behind trucks? But it's best not to ask these kind of questions. Just sit back and uh, watch him get justice. The movie also makes some major leaps of tone, such as how we go from that chase to a wacky truck stuck in a desert scene, complete with some goofball synth. Then Thunder lays the law down to the cops. It's time for his brand of justice with a white man. And after that, an entire lineup of big fat white dudes shoot up the shack where Thunder is hiding as he makes big goofy eyes and runs away. The Thunder can't catch a break, but he replies by busting up their political rally by doing what he does best, blowing stuff up real good, riding a dirt bike, painting his face, and being ready for a fight. He ends up trying to bury a fat politician alive rather than take a payoff, but gets held up by the sheriff. He gets his money, rebuilds the village, heads off in the sunset with his woman. One supposes that we never got Thunder 4, and that that's because this was the last time he got in trouble with the law. But, man, I'm still holding out hope. I wish Mark Gregory hadn't died and that they'd made another one. I have watched every single second that this actor is committed to film, and that gives me a sense of completeness and sadness, though. Do I have to use uh, some kind of funding site to make the Italian action movie of my AI dreams? A movie where Thunder meets trash in the future? and they walk in too tight denim down an alley before somersaulting through fire. The real shame is that Thunder is not available on Blu-ray. I am throwing my hat in the ring right now and saying, if any label puts this out, I would absolutely love to talk for five minutes on it. I would love to do commentary on it. I feel like I'm the only person that cares about the Thunder Warrior trilogy. I want them to come out. I think this is a perfect set to put out. It feels like it's set, the Bruno Mattei movies that, Severn put out are great. Feels like it fits into that world. I really want these to come out. And the fact that they're on Tubi now, all three are on Tubi. You can just look them for Thunder. 
one, two, and three, well, just Thunder, not Thunder one. That'd be supposing that there'd be a Thunder two, and they probably shot these all together. They're on Tubi. I want you to watch them. I want you to get back to me, and I want you to fall in love with the world of movies that Enzo Castellari did and Fabrio DeAngelis. He has some really cool movies in his lineup, too. He may be best known as a producer. He produced uh, Emmanuel Around the World for Joe D'Amato, The Beyond, uh, both of the uh, Bronx movies, The Bronx Warriors and New Barbarians. And then finally, in 83, he moved into directing. He did Thunder Warrior, which we just talked about, uh, Impada Mortale, Manhunt, Operation Nam. And then he did six Karate Warrior movies and a TV series. I recommend all six of the Karate Warrior movies. Uh, he also did Killer Crocodile, which he uh, produced and directed the uh, first one. And he produced Pagiani Horror for uh, Lu- Luigi Cozy. And uh, he also produced Killer Crocodile 2, which was directed by Giannato De Rossi. Uh, he did write the screenplay for that. If you ever look on his films and you see Larry Ludman, uh, that's Fabriezzo D'Angelo. It's a name that I've said probably wrong, differently and somehow wrong every time I've said his name. Anyway, you know a big label out there or a small label or any label that could put out Thunder and in a box set beautiful box set. Let's talk. Let's make it happen. I'm Sam. You can learn more about movies on my site, BNS about movies, and you can reach out to me at BNS about movies at gmail.com.